Well, good morning from Aberfeldy. I'm just heading out to Acharn, the other side of Kenmore, and Loch Tay side, and then I'm going to tackle the big ones. A beautiful morning, really superb. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm just at the baker's. I've got a coffee and my cigaretto. So I'm a wee bit, maybe 20 minutes behind schedule, not much. I thought I'd uh, be on uh, Acharn for 10 o'clock, but I'll I'll not get there for half past, well, I'll pr probably not get organised for half past ten on the mountain for quarter to eleven maybe, eh? but uh, it's a, go a gorgeous morning here, no low vibrations at all, absolutely fantastic to see that, uh, absolutely no vi low vibrationals whatsoever, so I'll catch up with you at Akarn, okay? Well we're in Akarn and Loch Tayside, I'll, I'll get up that uh, track there and then we'll lead on to the hill. We've got a long way a long way today actually. So it's half past ten and it's uh it's gonna take me at least six hours uh on this one. Maybe more actually. So I wanna try and get back here for uh half past four or five o'clock at the latest but uh I'm I think I'll be pushing it. Um we're going into really high country today. The weather's absolutely stunning for uh, early March. It really is beautiful, frosty, cold morning. I think uh, I think the only thing which is um, problematic is uh, well, up and down should have been here. I can actually see how she, you know, she would be dressed. Not, uh, I'd probably say to no. Listen, going to wear the yellow cashmere that I bought you, and uh, you know, put on that. Uh, you put on your green Wellingtons. <laughs> yes, put on the green Wellingtons. So we're just crossing the bridge here at the Falls of Akarn, and as you can see. Uh, due to the dry weather for the last six weeks, we've got absolutely nothing in here apart from some ice at the back. Uh, these uh, falls should be uh, absolutely teeming with water. So you can imagine what it would be like up here in the spate. If you've got a heavy snowfall in the mountains and then the rapid thaw. Look at the actions on the water, on the stonework over millions of years well I don't believe it's millions of years I, I actually just think it's been about a thousand years maybe yeah who's to say if they can cancel culture like they've done recently uh, then they can lie about their history make up fables about prehistoric monsters there's nobody else to verify this it's alright saying well we've got fossils and some bone structure that could be that could be just be uh, put together like a Hollywood set to fool the masses. Yeah, I think we're going to get a a lot of uh, inclement weather in March to make up for this uh, glorious spell we've recently had. Yeah. Well, we better push on, Andrew. I've not mentioned, but this is the 4th of March, 23. And we're uh, heading our way onto the, uh, the mountain slopes using this uh, little track which uh, will eventually uh, wear thin. Okay, so some very high summits in, to tackle today, so I'll pick you up later. Uh, ben Laws is looking very spectacular today with the snow in the uh, northeast uh, quarries, eh? I've had a bit of uh, map work to do. So what, the track uh, is heading uh, eastwards, but I need to be following the stream, and I'm hopefully I can pick up a track or some sort over the other side. But I'll follow the stream up because that's the uh, that's going to be the best route, and then take a 
a southeasterly turn and get some height and then we'll see where we are from there. Okay so we've followed this stream uh, for about a mile and uh, maybe more through pretty rough ground, uh, pretty you know, deep heather and, and quite boggy in places. Uh, ben Laws is getting some cloud cover. There's a bit of a change happening over towards the Cairn Gorms in the back there. Uh, I can see the snowshowers starting to come through. You probably won't pick it up in the camera, but uh, take it from me, that's uh, a subtle change which might develop into something. Uh, they're not bad at the moment right enough, but uh, I've got a, a lot of climbing ahead of me just now, but uh, we'll soon be heading towards high noon, so I'm very conscious of uh, the amount of hours we have of daylight, obviously trying to return back. Uh, so we'll pick up shortly. I might stop off and get a cup of tea. I think I probably need one. Okay, these are the big, uh, well, 2,700 feet, I would reckon. What? Uh, three, three. Certainly about 2,600 feet. Um, hello Mr. Grouse. I'm thinking, I, I'm not confident getting up to, to you're not going to see the summit because I want to get try look over into uh, Glen Almond from this side. I can see a faint summit, I think. It could be a false summit over there. But there's, uh, I mean, it's very difficult, uh, rough grounds, and uh, there's a lot of elevation there, more than what you probably pick up in the camera. So I'm not confident I can get over and back to this point, and then another, well, that's an hour. No, it's two and a half hours it's taken me to get to here. Yeah, it's 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 not going to happen. I'm going to have to wait until the clocks change and hope for a break in the weather late March maybe early April and do a a 12 hour shift on it that's the only it's the only way I'm going to be able to do it there's a hill behind me which I'll, I'm going to tackle just to, to, to take it off and I'll get some good views of the the laws range and stuff but uh now it's a it's too far I told you before this is a, a very very difficult uh range to, to reach they're so isolated it's, and they're so distant that that one away way over at the back is uh, it's completely out of touch for uh, for most people I'm afraid it's probably it's probably probably the least climbed mountain in Scotland I would say that one over there I mean I'm a wee bit disappointed that uh, when I set out on a a journey and I I have plans to what I'm going to do. I normally like to complete it, um, but uh, this is take the pressure off slightly because it means that I'm not uh, going to be stressed now that uh, you know light's going to fade and have to you know return by torchlight and uh, drive over that terrible Glen Road. Uh, in the pitch dark with deer dark night in front of you and stuff, you know, so you just gotta weigh up everything and as I say that's that's what keeps me safe in the mountains. I I never fool hardly. But apart from that time I went to Minaldo of course. Which was uh, a rather haunting experience to be honest. But at least I realised I had guardian angels. Um Apart from my, uh, well, maybe it was my great grandmother. I'll give uh, up and down a fair, a fair dues that day. She, uh, when I asked for her help, find the path, she instantly came, 0.5 seconds, or was it less? And uh, I was grateful. That's when we still had that extremely, well, we still had the strong telepathic bond, but she's ruined that as well. There's still some telepathy telepathy between us but uh, normally it's uh, when she's sitting bubbling and crying on her couch and, or can't sleep and, or having nightmares that's normally when I get these 
energies from her help me, come and save me. I know it was my fault, but uh, well, her fault, but uh, what I'm saying is speaking in her words. I know it was my fault, Andy, but uh, please come and help me. My life is so fucking miserable without you. And I don't like that fucking rat face that comes around all the time either. I just use him because he's a fucking slave for the garden. I take as much money off him as I can, fucking get lifts off him. He's a rat. I know he is. <laughs> Fucking right. So, Scrolls you get out, Andrew. It's fucking gorgeous. I haven't mentioned, but I've been up there, Lossy. Been up there a couple of times, eh? Well, bleak country. If you're caught in a whiteout up here, well, you really are struggling. Hmm, it's a long way to find any, what do you call it, civilization if you've not got your compass. In fact, I would probably say if you've not got a compass with you and you're in a white out, you may as well say goodbye. I've got beautiful white hair, just on the other side of the, the peat hag there, enjoying the sunshine. When I stand up, it will start to move, but. Uh, it's got a beautiful white coat, so it's it's also expecting some winter to arrive late in the season. Let me show you. There you go. It's not it's not seen me yet. Hey, Papa. Can you hear me? He's not seen me. Well, see me when I make a step, though. I don't want to disturb you. I'm not going to leave her. You lovely thing. I'll leave him in peace. I'll try and get away without him seeing me. Yeah. Now he's still sitting there, he didn't see me. That's good. Not the biggest mountain in the world, but uh, no, it's, it's not bad. Hiya there, Bobo. Goodness me, nice to see you. And thanks very much for having me. What a lovely thing you are. Look at that quartz. Isn't that beautiful? Imagine building your house with quartz, eh? Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I can feel a, a little flurry of snow just sprinkling through the, from the fairy mountain itself over there. We'll get a seat and we'll have a cup of tea. And as I've seen, but the camera is a bit shaky. I know where I am, so that's Glen West of Glen Quake. Uh, I'll go and do that summit as well.
very boring view. It's Alberfelder Car Park at the Co-op. I um, I just zipped in there uh, to get some uh, double cream and um, <coughs> for my porridge to go with my honey. But also um, a lighter because I, as I maybe I remarked, I lost my lighter. So um, I, I went all that time without a, a smoke and uh, I didn't really need that little smoke I just had. But anyway, it's done now. But I thought it was really good was. Um, I've got that my confidence back with uh, my flirtatious acts with women again. It's great because um, after the hideous cretin fucking statement um, that was given to me last summer, it took a wee dent. But uh, I realised that was just nonsense because uh, I've had a lot of uh, admirers. And um, anyway, this I, I just. Uh, Two of us have slid into the shop at the same time, right? She came that way, I came this way, sort of thing. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but I'd, I'd seen her smiling at me, really looking and really kind of like, uh, God, who are you? Sort of look. And uh, so I said to her, uh, are you just going out? And she says, no, I'm going to my work. I said, well, you're very well. And I couldn't fucking get the word. And she stood with me, staring at my face. Like, as I was like, my fucking whole brain just clogged up. Must have been the fatigue or something. And I was like, oh, what's the word? Oh, I've not even got a sense to us. He said, you look very well represented. <laughs> she just fucking smiled and laughed. She said, oh, thank you. But I think she, made, I think she knew I meant uh, uh, presented. You look well uh, presented. She said, she was pretty chuffed. I think I made her day. I was actually going to say, you look absolutely fucking, well, yeah, you actually look gorgeous, like. But I thought, I better fucking hold on. But she really was, she was really stunning. Um, but um, anyway, she was all right. She just, um, she just laughed and I said, I thought, thank you. That's a really nice thing to say. And she's like, anyway, I'll see her again. I just know that.